today I'm reading my award-winning story published in short stories by Texas authors sponsored by the Texas Authors Association. It's called Dawn of the Angry Guns. The acrid smoke that shrouded the enclosure dissipates during the chilly night, yet morning is almost two hours away. I squirm on my belly, pressing tighter to the ground, but it does little to shield me from the northwesterly wind gusting in from the Comancheria. Nor does it diminish the sweat that seeps from my skin and stings my eyes. I remember the miserable forced march in which Enrique and I suffered over 600 miles of brutal winter conditions. We made it easier than some other militiamen of our San Luis Potosi Activo unit. Upon arrival, my woolen uniform was given to a soldado. So I lie here in my summer cotton fatigues and sandals. We are to be totally silent, so I clench my jaw to stop my teeth from chattering. Though it is dark, I know my brother lies beside me. I am grateful that clouds shield us from the nearly full moon for our white uniforms might otherwise expose us to the Texan sharpshooters. Enrique, do you think they are sleeping? It has been hours since our last bombardment ended. I jerk when he taps me on the arm. Shh. I quietly allow the brown vest musket to sag from my shoulder and lay close beside me. Neither Enrique nor I have much experience with the long gun. We are more at home with plow and side. The experienced soldados are dispersed on the ground ahead of us. My mouth is so dry I cannot moisten my lips. I lift my head only enough to peer into the gloom. Moonlight slices between scudding clouds, painting the skeletal outline of the compound. It appears abandoned, but I know it is not, for my ears still ring from days of shelling. I am tired, hungry, and above all, wish to be anywhere but here. But I am here, and I will do what I'm ordered, for I cannot dishonor my unit, General Coase, or my beloved Mexico. I lift a shoulder enough to make the sign of the cross. I pray we can end this terrible ordeal tonight. We lie and wait a few hundred yards from the north wall. In another of the three columns to attack this side, my friend Carlos is one of the bearers carrying a rough-hewn ladder so that soldados may scale the wall. I don't know the men carrying crowbars and axes, but they will use them to break through the stone block windows and doorways. A silent signal is passed down the line. My gut clenches as I rise. The frigid wind flattens my sweat-soaked tunic against my chest and the chill makes it hard to catch my breath. I creep behind Enrique closer to the wall. The bugler sounds the charge. I carry the musket at ready and I surge forward at a run. My heart thuds against my ribs when the vile guns of the Texans belch fire. I see little in the dark, but I don't need eyes to know that men all around me are blasted apart. The terrible cries of the dying surround me. In a sliver of moonlight, a grisly sight makes me want to wretch. Only pieces remain of men who breathed a moment ago. Their blood clings to my tunic as I fall to the ground, never having seen such destruction of life. I am frantic to escape the horrendous roar and the agonized screams of the wounded, but the sergeant beckons. Enrique follows him, crying, Viva Mexico! Tears trickle down my face. Do they belong to fear or sorrow for the dead and wounded? Everything inside me shouts that I must run in the opposite direction, but I am duty bound to rise and follow my brother. Just a few more yards, I repeat, as my feet pound the uneven soil, stumbling over the dead and wounded in the dark. The sky trembles with the roar of their cannons, but their flashes of light are the only illumination I have. I scramble to press against the wall. We are close enough now that their big guns can no longer reach us. The defenders with rifles and shotguns 
fire down into our ranks. When we return fire, the flash of our muskets gives away our location. They need not aim, for we are packed together like beeves waiting for slaughter, and many are slaughtered. I fire back only when I must. My musket packs such a powerful charge that when I fire, it slams into my shoulder and sends black powder stinging into my face and eyes. Some of our troops dump part of the powder on the ground to reduce the shoulder bruising, but then their shots fall short of the target. I duck reflexively when cannons on the North Main Battery wipe out part of Colonel Duque's column. I close my eyes, not wishing to see his men torn apart. At the same time, another column rounds the northeast corner. As Enrique and I follow Colonel Cosa's orders to move eastward along the wall, all the columns smash together and chaos ensues. I welcome the Colonel's command to disengage from the tangled mass and I rush westward back in the direction we came. But several of Duque's men find the wrong target, for they are shooting from the hip to avoid shoulder injury. I glance behind me. Our troops drop as they are struck in the back. I gasp and rush forward behind Enrique. We round the corner past the pecan tree that stands sentinel outside the compound's west wall. I cast a longing eye at the thick trunk I could hide there until the danger is past. I cannot do it. When a cannon flashes, I crouch hoping to remain hidden from their rifles. When a cloud clears the moon, I discover that rather than uneven ground, I am treading through the remains of my compadres. Madre de Dios. The screams of the wounded and panic cries of those who remain upright tear at my senses. I clench my teeth and growl, low and guttural. If I make it to the wall interior, everyone there will pay for this gruesome battle. Ladders never make it to the wall. Perhaps they've been torn asunder in the charge or their bearers were killed. So with crowbars and axes, the leading soldados knock out openings in the stone block windows on the west wall. We climb through as the holes become large enough to pass. At first, few defenders are there to thwart us. When Enrique reaches the interior, I take courage from his accomplishment. A rebel fires and my brother collapses. I rush to him and kneel. Don't die, Hermano. You are brave, I need you. Blood fountains from his chest as his heart beats its last. Prodded forward by an officer, I rise, wiping my eyes and nose on my sleeve. I will avenge his death. I will kill that Texan and all like him. I scramble past two soldados in combat with a buckskin clad defender. I locate our sergeant who bayonets a rebel and thrusts it for others, but he is hacked apart when two of the Texans fall upon him. Yet more of our numbers pour through the battered openings. I cannot think for all the noise around me. Discharge weapons roaring, a drummer, a bugler, sabers clashing, screams of the dying, profanities, as others parry their last defense. No longer can I tell friend from foe, for the smoke swirls thick inside the compound. My eyes sting and my nose runs. I gasp choking on the soupy air. Dawn nears. Soon the darkness that conceals us will lift and we will surely perish. I spot our own soldados' uniforms through the haze. Even now they fall one after another. Where did the enemy go? I cast a glance across the courtyard and spot them. Many shoot from a roof and others in second floor rooms fire from windows, slaughtering dozens of my compadres in the plaza. My temples throb. I join others in discharging our musket at those who fired, but it seems to make little difference. My heart pounds, but then my fear suffocates under another feeling. I acknowledge grief for all those lost before we reach the wall. I fight tears for Enrique, who died just inside, and I am nauseous 
thinking of our soldiers whose bodies lie over and alongside those of the rebels. I set that aside and narrow my eyes as steely calm sweeps over me. I reload my musket. I know what I must do. An officer signals and I obey along with other forces. He waves us forward to the postern near the northwest corner. We wrench it open and our troops flood in. But moments later, I drop to the ground as small cannon fire from atop the building across the plaza rips our column apart. I rise and join the others to send a hail of musket balls toward the gunners and the gun falls silent. I am pleased, but my satisfaction is short-lived. I have no time to reload because rebels in the eastern buildings rain their deadly gunfire across the courtyard toward us. Ducking and running for cover, I hope I don't get shot, particularly by a shotgun. They're the worst. They tear out a man's innards, but leave him living for a while. Gracias a Dios, I escape death one more time. I still cannot hear well, but smoke from our musket men in the plaza means they fire by ranks. Three quick volleys. Our soldiers surge into the south end of the courtyard, but when some of them fall, it looks like those entering from the north wall fire into the smoke-filled fort without selecting a target. Their poorly aimed shots kill our own men. As dawn nears, the Texans continue firing, and I am pinned down. Noise louder than the din in the courtyard draws my attention. Artillery General Ampudia and a number of his gunners move some of the Texans' own cannon down from the north wall bastion. My heart leaps as one by one the guns blast through the buttress doorways of the rooms now sheltering the Texans. An officer draws his saber to lead the advance. I am without leadership now, so I follow his soldados as they plunge into the long barracks where the defenders hide in the gloom. I fight the urge to vomit as I pick my way through the mangled bodies of men I ate meager rations with, choked with, prayed with. Little more can I stand from these barbarians. I have long abandoned firing my brown vest, for it takes too long to reload. I make good use of its bayonet. I plunge into the melee, slashing, gouging, clubbing, kicking, stomping. A sudden pain in my shoulder and my left arm goes limp. I have no time to submit to the pain. Presidente Santa Ana ordered no quarter and no quarter shall they receive. I cannot see in the dark rooms, so I stab anything that moves. A sharp blow to my head and bright lights blossom behind my eyes. Yet I whirl and thrust my bayonet into my attacker then I crumple to the floor. When I awaken dazed, I stumble back into the parade ground. Blood from the head wound cracks and flakes off as I squint into the daylight. My left arm will move, but to do so sends pain slashing through my shoulder. I shield my eyes from the sun, then clamp them closed. I don't wish to see our brave soldiers' bodies lined in rows on the ground with soldaderas kneeling beside them. But I cannot shut out the women's weeping in Kini. Those sounds will follow me all the days of my life. All this misery, all the dead and wounded. When I allow myself to look again, I wonder about a path that is scraped through the blood and gore on the courtyard dirt. It leads outside the enclosure. Carlos joins me. I ask him about it. It was made by our cavalry. They dragged the rebels out to the pyres to be burned. I want to see this for myself, to take satisfaction in their desecration. I cradle my left arm and stumble through the gateway, plodding several hundred yards to the side. Before me, their bodies lay stacked in alternate layers with firewood. The largest pyre towers into the sky, while the other two are not so high. I lean my head back and close my eyes for a moment. Where is the satisfaction, the sense of victory? I sigh. 
No matter what they have done, somehow I take no joy in seeing them stacked so. It is enough to know that they will not be honored by burial. But our dead lie awaiting interment, for they died with honor and deserve that dignity. I sniff back tears when I think of Enrique. He is among them, somewhere, and he will lie here with them for eternity. I pick up a discarded brown vest and remove the bayonet. On the early spring morning of March 6, 1836, I trudge into the greening countryside until I can no longer see the Alamo, but I cannot ignore three dark plumes of smoke smudging the sky. I find a stone and sit, turning away from the source of my nightmare. I am bone weary, but I cannot sleep. Images of the battle play in my head, endlessly repeating. Mangled bodies mounted three or four atop one another. Gunshots and cries of agony and rage ring in my ears. Smoke and gunpowder still sting my nose, but those mingle with that of blood and viscera. I will never be free from the horror of those scenes, and I am terrified. My fingers wander over the smooth steel of the bayonet. I cannot reconcile the man who made that long journey here with the one who moved from room to room, killing everything in sight. I could not, or would not, control the rage that burned deep in my gut. I allow my chin to rest on my chest. That anger has since consumed my soul. Empty of emotion, I lift my head. Perdona me, Padre. I make the familiar sign of the cross and then plunge the bayonet into my own heart. <laughs>